Let us pray. Father, we thank you this day for this time of worship. We thank you, O oh God, for these young people, for the facilitators, the counselors, the teachers, and all that have worked with them to bring them to where they are. Lord, you work with us to bring us from where we were to where we are. So as we come today, O oh Father, we thank you for your holy word, which is food for life. And as we listen now, O oh Father, O oh Holy Spirit, be with us and guide us and give the message that you will have us do today. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now today, your camp comes to an end and we would like to believe, and I do believe, that all of you have enjoyed the experience. You learned new skills, you gathered much information and things you didn't know before over the past weeks from this event. You have been taught many things and given tools that we hope you will use, not just for your own self-gratification, but for Almighty God who gave his son Jesus Christ for our redemption. In him we have our life, we have our being, and it's to him that we must give an account of our time and our talents here on earth. So as you have given us an account of the work which you did over the past weeks as we sat down and listened to you, we will have to give an account to Almighty God for our lives and how we use our lives and our talents while here on earth. So this is just a reminder. It is my prayer for all of us here today that these young people and all the rest of us will stand strong for God and shun what is evil in the sight of God. Try hard as you might and try as hard as you like, none of us can live a holy and acceptable life on our own. Some people try it, some people want to say they do it, but we can't. We need help and we need a savior. Paul reminds us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, to put on the whole armor of God. And there's a reason for that, and we'll talk about that later. But I turn my attention to John chapter 6, 63, where it says, It is the spirit that gives life, the flesh is useless. And you know, many of us like to look to what we can see and touch. And that's what a lot of people glory in. But here the words of Jesus he tells us it is a spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. Now when Jesus spoke these words, he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum and he was speaking to what you would call the church people, those who were worshippers and some of his disciples who were with him. This statement was made after Jesus had told them that he is the living bread come down from heaven. And Jesus never did anything without consulting his father because he and the father are one. And Jesus said, I live because of the father. He sent me. So whoever eats me will live because of me. And he means eternal life. And people get upset about this eating the flesh and drinking the blood, but it's not cannibalism. These who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. And we do celebrate that when we come to the altar for communion, to take the flesh and blood of Jesus as we take the sacrament. So these Jews and people in the synagogue talked about their ancestors having food in the desert when with Moses. But Jesus had to remind them that his father sent that food down. 
But now he is the true food, the true life. And if you want eternal life, it is on him you must feed. This is, was a difficult truth for many of them to understand back then. And it is still difficult for many to understand and believe today. In Jesus' day on earth, these people saw him as the son of Mary and Joseph. That's all. Just the son of Mary and Joseph. And though he did many great miracles, and, he, and they chose not to accept Jesus for who he was and who he is. This food Jesus is speaking of is very necessary. They rejected him, but it was for them and it's for us. This is the food that has come down from heaven for all of us that we must partake in if we want eternal life. Now all of us, including young people, are made up of body, soul, and spirit. So your physical body is what we see, and you like to fill it with food, you like to eat Kentucky and Shafet and all the other things that you like. That is the body that you are filling with the food. That's the flesh. Within your body is your spirit being, the real you, with your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. That's the heart of the matter. That part of us has to be fed also, and not on junk food, but on spiritual food. We are advised to guard our heart and not let it be corrupted in any way. If you turn to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, that's where you will find it. Because we will all have to give an account to our Heavenly Father for our soul and how we use it. So the food that you're going to eat will be spiritual food, not the fleshy food. And that spiritual food comes from God's word. And Jesus is reminding all of us, all of them and all of us now, what we must do to have eternal life. So while you were at camp and you learned many things, dance, music, coordination, counselors, facilitators, helpers were responsible for you. Now I hope none of you were rude or rebellious in any way or difficult to work with. But if you were, you were wrong. And today is a good day to tell them that you are sorry and ask their forgiveness. It is the correct thing to do and it pleases our Heavenly Father. So if you know you have been difficult, I wasn't wrong, so I don't know. But any of you that gave trouble, if you did, just turn and tell them you're sorry and ask their forgiveness. Is that a deal? Is that a deal? You see, we had all got to behave children, nobody behaved badly. Jesus stated that the words he spoke are spirit and life. That's in verse 53, 63. In order to live, you must feed on the holy word of God, which is the food and strength for your soul and spirit. So when you get to your Bible and start to read it every day and meditate on God's word, you are feeding that soul. You come in here to worship and you raise your voice and your heart and your soul in worship, you're feeding that soul. That spirit man must be fed. So it is not just saying that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you must believe in him and his finished work on the cross. You see, when he went to the cross, he did it all. That is where the blood 
and the flesh come in. And this is crucial for every person, old, young, and everybody in between. Nobody, none are accepted. All of us have to come to this point where we accept Jesus, where we give our lives, where we study his word and feed on it, and where we partake of his flesh and his blood. So the message in today's gospel reading is if you want to live an eternal life, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood, as Jesus said. And he delivered it on the cross. Jesus and the Father are one, and he wants us to be one with them. But we must repent and do what he directs. And you will know what he directs when you read his word, which is very important. If you listen to the gospel, you would have realized that when Jesus spoke, there were doubters, complainers, and grumblers. And we still have them today. And when you first came here to do something, you had doubts too, but you wanted to do something, you found something you liked, and you did it. And look what has happened. You develop, you produce, and we are all happy that you've come this far. But do not doubt. And do not let anybody put you down. You must believe in what you are doing and that you can achieve. Many of us get turned off when people start to tell you that it ain't sound good or you know, it ain't coming to marks. And you start to get disheartened. But you must believe in what you are doing and trust in God and ask him to help you develop. You see, these grumblers and these people who complain grew up around Jesus and Jesus grew up among them. So they knew him. And the people that you grew up among sometimes are the hardest people to convince that you can do it. People who know you when you start to reach great heights, you might find the accolades coming from outside. But your own people take a long time sometimes before they acknowledge you. But if you believe in what you're doing, then you will achieve. So because Jesus grew up among these people, many regarded him just as the son of Mary and Joseph, a carpenter's son and a carpenter. So the only thing that they could expect from him was a chair and a table. They couldn't even get a miracle. Or some object made out of wood. That's why the Bible tells you that Jesus did not do many good, many miracles in his own town. And among his own people, his own people, or his own neighbors. Because they, 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 they only knew him as a carpenter's son. And that's all they could think about him. And I know that some of you will have a better Focus on your life to go further than what somebody might want to put in your head that you can't get beyond such and such a place. But you have to have that focus. So they rejected him. God made each and every one of you and he has placed a special gift in you that is special to you. Not to me, not to your mother, not to you. So you have a special gift. You may not know what it is at the moment, but trust me, all of us were born and have a special gift that is special to us. And it, we are to use whatever gifts we have for his glory and not your own self-aggrandizement. It's not about you. And you must not pervert the gift that you're given by using it the wrong way or in a negative manner or, in, or for evil purposes. That's the next thing. It might be good. You might be good at it. And then somebody wants to use it for a negative reason. Or you have to use your head. Look in God's word and make sure that you are using your talents for God and using your talents the right way. 
very often people start out in the church singing and the next thing you know they're on the, the pop charts singing something else other than God's glory that's a common thing you have to hold your focus especially in the music world you can get carried away anytime music world pays big bucks to do stupidness but God gives us these talents and he does not take them back either but be advised that you have to give an account of what you have done with your talent. Remember the parable of the talent. If you turn to Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30, you will see that there the master was going away and he summoned his slaves and he gave them five talents. He gave them no, he's giving them. They don't have it. Just like God has, give, has given us, he is giving them talents. He gives five, he gives two, he gives one. He gives them each according to their own ability. So my ability is not yours. Yours is not mine. You have your own ability. And God gives you a gift and a grace to suit you. So don't try to match somebody else. Do your thing. Somebody might try to match you. Because you're good at it. Because you do your own thing. So the talents were given. And he went away. And what happened? The first man with the five. Earned five more. The one with the two. He earned two. But the one that got one. Stick it in a hole in the ground. When the master returned, the account had to be given. And the first one said, well, Sir, you gave me five talents. I have gone out and I have earned five more. Well done, good and faithful servant. And you will enter into my rest. You my joy. You go on side. Second one come. Sir, I earned two more, so I have four. Well done, good servant. Enter into my joy, my rest. The last one will come with an excuse. Well, I know that you are a hard task master, and you, you know, gather me and so and all, and all the kinds of excuses you can give. And what did the master do? Took the one from him, gave the one that has. And that had earned more and cast him to outer darkness with his weeping and gnashing of teeth. And in that parable, when you read it, you will realize that his, Jesus is telling us that we have to account at the end of our lives for how we have used our time and our talents here on earth. So be very careful what you consume not only with your mouth, but with your ears. So what do you listen to? What kind of music you listen to? What kind of jokes do you indulge in? What do you hear? With your eyes, what do you watch? You have your phone. What goes on on that phone? What do you watch? Are there things that are wholesome? Are there things that you would want your mother to see you watching? I ain't seeing it. I ain't hearing the yeses. So be careful what your eyes see. Your eyes are the window to your soul. That's why <clears throat> parents sometimes have to take pains to make sure that you are watching and taking in the right things, positive things, and not the wrong things. And with your feet, where do you walk and choose to go? You want to walk from here down to bottom of Broad Street and somebody want to carry you up. That's not where you're supposed to go. But they can lead you astray. Where do your feet go? Where do you, they carry you? These are things you have to watch.
and most of all with their mouth, you have to be careful what comes out of that mouth and how you use it. I know that gossip is supposed to be a major culture pastime, but it's a bad one. It's negative because that gossip damages people's lives, people's character. And when you damage a person's character, you are a thief because when you take somebody's character, you cannot give it back. You have stolen something from them which you cannot give back. So be careful how that tongue in your head is used. So Jesus warned in Matthew 12, 36 about how you use your mouth. And he says, I tell you on the day of judgment, you will have to give an account of every careless word you utter. For by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. So there you have it, not my words. There in Matthew 12, 36, they're the words of Jesus warning us about we having to give an account, not only of our lives, but of the words that we speak, and careless words. And all of these can corrupt a precious soul if you allow it. That's why Paul said they have to put on the whole armor of God. They put on that armor to protect you from the darts and the arrows that come from the evil one, the shoes of peace to walk the right places, a tongue to praise God and to give a ready word to someone in need. The whole armor of God is, the, and the sword of the Spirit. Oh yes, this Bible, the sword of the Spirit, which we have to use at times when we are facing difficulties. But we should always be in the Word because to have a ready answer for the evil one when he attacks. And he does attack. And they are doing it more so now because time is at the end. So I want you to be able to guard your tongue, guard your eyes, guard your feet, and also remember what food is good for you. Not only Shafet and Kentucky and Subway and all the other brands that you like to use, the Holy Bible is your most necessary food.